All right, guys. So good afternoon. My name is Cindy Mattingly, and today we're talking about crystals and animals. And I'm going to divide up the day or our time into two parts. The first one is distinguishing in-person and distance sessions, and then the process I go through in setting up that session. So that's kind of like the logistics. And then the second part, I'll stop. I'll come, you know, I'll stop the share and then I uh, will see if there's any questions. And then we'll go into screen share again and I'll go over the actual procedure of the, the animal crystal massage. Okay, so that just so you're prepared as notes and things of that sort. All righty. So let's go to the screen share. And there we go. All righty. So I'm just reading that first paragraph. It says the animals often have an affinity for and curiosity about crystals and will seek them out. They appear to sense the crystal energy more readily and directly than we do. We need to be aware of the sensitivity if we wish to offer crystal energy as part of our care with them. We need to modulate the intensity of our offerings. And in this class, I'm gonna share the steps I use to offer crystals and crystal energy to animals, whether in person or through a distance session. And then the second part is I'm gonna review the suggested procedure of a crystal massage for your animal companion. So as you'll notice, what I'm gonna, I'm talking about in-person and distant. So the very first one in there, it says crystal selection. So if the animal is in person, the physical, you, you can only offer them what you have, right? So whatever crystals you have, you can douse it and say, all right, I'm gonna offer them these three and then they can pick in the physical. And an example I will give you is, um, I was experimenting with my cats. I have five, of course. And I set out these piles of little bitty tumbled stones. One was rose quartz, one was amethyst, and one was clear quartz. So I laid out a blanket and I put the three piles out and I just sat back and observed the animals. So all five of them came over, wandered around the crystals, but four of them walked away. So they're telling me in the physical, which one, so Sweetie is her name. And Sweetie went and batted around each pile. But the one she was really drawn to was the amethyst. And she laid down in it and she rolled around. It was probably a half a dozen of those tumbled stones. So she selected what she wanted. So that's step one in an in-person animal session. Now, if you go into the distant, again, the same uh, scenario is that you, what do you have physically because you're gonna be doing a distant session and to, to offer the animal. So let's say if I use the same three crystals that I had available, then I would probably douse them. That would be my, my way of going, oh, okay, this one, yes or no, this one, yes or no, this one, yes or no. So those would be my ways of picking the crystal. The next one is the crystal introduction because you need to figure out, are you going, if it's in person, are you going to have the animal lay on the crystal or is the animal going to lay down so you could put the crystal on them? How are you going to introduce that? Because remember, they read energy 
a lot differently, differently than we do, and they're much more sensitive. So that's going to be the in-person consideration. What I've found over the many crystal sessions I've done for animals is that most of them do not like the crystal so close. So that I'm just being a mindful of the fact that it's pretty intense for them. And then when I say that, I think I did a Magic Monday many, many years ago. Jen probably remembers it because we had a person brought in two chihuahuas and I did the demo in the Magic Monday in the physical and the, the puppy literally put the, their hand, their paw on my hand and brought my hand to their body with the crystal in it. So you just pay attention to the physical because they're gonna tell you, you're too close. Yes, I want it on me. No, I don't. So you pay attention to the, that kind of behavior. So crystal introduction into the distance session of course, everything is energy. So if you've doused the crystal from the, pre the previous selection, okay, you're going to use clear quartz. And you've got that. Then if you're working with a picture, you can use the picture, right, as that same kind of distance. The more intense the energy is, the animal may, you may feel the energy of the animal moving away from it. You pay attention to how you feel the animal respond. Sometimes maybe that day you aren't able to feel that, you would douse it again. Am I gonna do it 12 inches away, 15 inches away, five inches away, or am I going to be just in the, as close to their physical body as possible, but in the energy, because it's a distance session. So you just start dowsing that or muscle testing, whichever way you make those kinds of decisions. So now we have our crystal and we've introduced it to them and figured out where we're going to treat. Now the next consideration is the placement. Okay, if you're in the physical, um, having treated a lot of different types of animals, birds, cats, dogs, horses, bunnies. I don't think a ferret. I've treated them, but not in person. Um, some of them will lay down. You can have a dog, you can have them lay down and you can say stay and they stay sometimes. But if the energy is too much, right, they're not going to lay still for you to do that. So you're paying attention to the communication that they have through their behavior. So you, that's a consideration in the physical. They also don't need a lot of crystals because they are sensitive. So just you're going to, sometimes what I'll do well, not sometimes, I douse everything or muscle test and I'll say, okay, how many crystals do I need to have available? One, two, three, ah, oh, three. So if the animal is in person and they'll lay down, I might not put it on their body, but I might put it in the locations when I take my pendulum or my Here's my pendulum. If I take my pendulum and I'm holding it over their body and trying to find that place that says, yes, this is my yes. Oh, okay, so I'm going to put it on their, you know, out above their head with them laying down, but not on them. This is again going through the physical. If the animal is in distant, you, and maybe you're using a picture. I used to use physical pictures, but now because of the internet, right, it's on the screen. I will actually take a piece of paper 
I write their name on that. I see the animal lining up upright, if you will. And then I douse where the crystal needs to sit in their energy field. And that's the distance session. So that's placement. And then duration again, I think as a human, we always think more is better. Animals, the small dose is really important. We've talked about color and duration. We've, so crystals are the same thing. It's all vibrate, vibration. So you want to really be mindful that they might not be able to tolerate 30 seconds, a minute. They don't need a lot because they're not thinking about it. They're just experiencing the energy. So you're, again, whether it's in the physical or in the, on a distance session, you're there, you want to be very mindful of the duration. And then the last piece about that is the dowsing and the muscle testing. You want to find a way to get feedback from if it's in person or in a distant that you're on the right track, you're using the right thing, the session is complete, what all those things you would be asking because you want to make sure you have the dose right, the placement right, the right crystals, and then the animal doesn't get overstimulated and they are feeling more balanced, which is what you want to feel if you go get a crystal session. You don't want to feel so activated that you're buzzing. So those are, I'm going to stop the share. So those are just the, these are my drop down check menu that I do in my head. It just drops down and I go, okay, do I know what I want to use? How am I going to introduce it to them in either world? And uh, like, this is another example. I have a cat that's uh, not the bat, her back is bothering her. So I'm, I have two wands. And when I'm, or I actually I have three, I'm going to take all three of them after our session today. Because of course I noticed it right before I'm coming in and I'm going to go treat her and see how that works with her. I always notice when this stuff connects, right? She's specifically complaining about her back. It looks twitchy and I'm teaching a crystal massage for animals. So I, I put those two together. So any questions from any of you guys or does that all make sense? Everybody good? Um, I have I, kind of a basic question. Why, why use crystals? I, it's the same reason why you would uh, use a crystal for a human is it magnifies the experience and amplifies whatever's going on. So if you're wanting to move energy, like my cat that I was giving the example, she apparently has something going on in her back. So I did the other things earlier today. I did Reiki. I did cranial sacral with her and she was quieter afterwards, but apparently it didn't, if you will, I'm not much of this word, but fix it. It wasn't balanced. So she was still complaining. That's a good question. But it's all these things, whether you use scent or sound or color or crystals, it's all about magnifying the actual energy so that you get the desired balance for whomever, for yourself, for your animal, for your world, for your goal, for your uh, affirmations. Did that answer that? No? Yes. Cool. Everybody else good? No questions? Jen, do you remember who the, the dog was? Was it uh, Rose's sister's dog? Oh, maybe. maybe. Oh, the two chihuahuas. Yeah, I forget their names. Um, I think he was like Taco or something. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't yeah. he? He yeah. was the cutest thing. Yeah, he, he was. He just took my hand and yeah. I was like, 
about everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. It was really cool. Yeah, was I mean, cool. I always get amazed. Yeah. Even though it like happens, you know, but yeah. when they pick it, it's wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, so everybody's good. You feel ready to go to the massage piece? Yes. Yep. Good. All right. I'm going to go back. Do you have a question, Valerica? You're good. No, I just uh, want to make a comment. I remember that session uh, at your studio in Andover, uh -huh. and there were a bunch of uh, crystals. Right. Different, different, yeah. So, and the, I remember the dogs picking, choosing what they wanted. That's right. But there right. were like more than three, more like the bunch, quite a, a few. Yeah, I gave crystals. myself choices, you know, because I have a pretty large crystal collection. Mm-hmm. And you, you never know when you're, when you're working on humans, it's the same thing. Am I going to work it on their chakras? Am I going to work on their physical body? Am I going to work on a joint? So then I would use a different type of crystal. And it was the same thing with the animals. But like he was crystal clear, no pun intended, on um, which one he wanted to use. Yes. So my, my question, my question then is, uh, is it better to use a few, maybe three or four crystals to start with? Yeah, whatever you you have available, because you're going to get some kind of guidance, mm -hmm. and you'll you'll honor that. Okay. And that's the thing. You know, like today, I only brought three for our our time. Okay, it makes sense. Yeah. Good. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right, everybody ready? Let's go to massage. There it is. There we go. Okay. So what you're going to want I'm going to just So this is everybody can see this. This is a green onyx wand. It's smooth on one end, smooth on the other. So it's been polished. So that's one choice. This is also considered a wand, but it doesn't have that tapered in. This is selenite. But again, it's a, a wand because you can hold it like a pencil. And then this particular one is uh, a raw quartz. Now, what I do when I use it on a physical person is I've already checked like the point won't cut the skin both ends because you're gonna be using both of them. So for today, I'll use this. And so the, it says the supply is a six inch clear quartz crystal wand, which is pointed on one end and round on the other. So you can, this is raw, but this is polished. So depending upon what you have available, you, you are gonna pick. So the first thing you have to do is ground yourself because you're getting ready to hold a crystal and you wanna make sure that your energy is grounded. You're not thinking about anything else because it will magnify whatever's going on in you. So we want to be really mindful about that. One of the best ways to ground yourself is just to put your feet on the floor and rub them as an example. And that gets you nice since you have an awareness of your feet and that'll bring your energy down through your body. Okay, so now I'm going to use my hand as the animal. You're taking the rounded end on the animal. So this is the pointed end, this is the round. And you can either lay it on their skin or you might douse it, right? And see how they react. You start out a little distance away from their body and you come closer. They will show you, their behavior will show you which way it should be. So let's say we're gonna work a little bit off the body. You wanna be aware of where the point is because we're, we're doing the rounded 
and you want to hold it like a pencil because you don't want to do this because you're going to be blocking the work that the crystal is magnifying and helping you with. So you want to hold it no matter whether it's that one or this one. I don't want to hold it like that. I want to hold it like this. Both ends should be open. Even though this is either way, you're just going to remember you're going to flip it. Okay, well, back to my quartz. So you're going to take this rounded end, it's close to the, the, the tail. So it's already at the tail in and move the wand in counterclockwise circles all the way. So counterclockwise, I'm at the tail end and I'm just doing this very, doesn't have to be very much. So you can just imagine if you're working on a cat, a bird, how quick that's gonna go, right? So once you've done that, notice what it says. It says, now turn the wand around and direct the point towards the animal and the round away, moving the wand from head to tail. So I'm flipping my, my wand and I'm doing clockwise circles. So now I'm just going to start at the head where I, and I'm just gonna do this. Okay. So it's really, you, and you don't have to make a whole bunch of passes because the animal is really sensitive. If you did this particular thing on a person, you wanna be again, very mindful what you're doing. How much energy are you extracting and how much energy are you putting back in? Because that's basically what you're doing, right? You're counterclockwise removing and now you're adding. Okay. So I'm going to stop the share and see if there's questions. Doesn't have to be a big crystal. These are big. You can have small ones you know, little, they don't have to be big. I mean, these are big for demo purposes, but they are, so questions, thoughts, comments, Okay, I'm going to answer it before it comes. Can you do this same crystal thing on a human? The answer is yes. Again, you want to be mindful of duration and where are you. And so joints, you don't want to do like over the sternum. Because the idea is that a crystal is going to amplify. So whatever your mood is, whatever your thought is, you want to... Be aware of that when you pick this up and keep your feet nice and planted. And that's the goal. Also paying attention to which direction you're pointing it. Does that all make sense to everybody? And then after, oh, Sorry. go ahead. <laughs> oh no, go ahead, you're okay. Um, so after you do that, the clearing i'm saying clearing it may not be but you you clear their energy you give them back good energy then do you start your treatment or would you do the head to tail like at the final well i would douse it because okay. sometimes the energy is stuck right if um the animal just came say from the shelter right they may have a lot that could be trauma there whatever it might be but again, it's like, let's say the animal laid down or I have an image of the animal laying down, physical or distant. They may, I might go boop, 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 boop. Then I go back, right? Now I've gone back. They flip, I flip them over, they flip over depending upon and you do the same thing. And what's that gonna take? A minute? Yeah. Maybe. Depends upon how big, you know, if you're working on 
a small bird. I did Rocco. <laughs> Rocco is a, a bird of a farm. At, he lives on a farm with a friend of mine. And, you know, he's what? Six inches tall, maybe eight. So how long did that take? Right? 15 seconds. <laughs> yeah, so it's like you want to just be mindful because time for us is one thing. Time for them, they're not really in the time zone, right? They, they're looking at it a little differently. And I always, you know, in a treatment plan, you know, when I'm working with that 15 minutes, if there's questions that needs to be asked, if the, I'm like, what's for the highest good? How many things can I do for this person, this animal? And what are the priorities? So sometimes the priorities don't get, and I might recommend to the um, owner, you know, I think I might need to do another session. There was a lot that needed to get done. I had one uh, person, she has an animal in her house and then she had these other ferals coming around the house. And so she wanted me to see if these animals should be coming in and becoming part of her family. And her cat wanted nothing to do with that. The one in the house. And so she had me do a session on her cat and then she had me do, you know, check in with the ferals. Well, that was quick and easy, right? I don't really have permission, but I did ask them, you know, are you interested? <laughs> and they were like, uh, no. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well that conversation's over because they weren't domesticated, right? So, mm -hmm. So Jane, did you have a question? Um, you, you were answering it. I was kind of thinking around the lines of um, like removing energy, putting energy back and kind of being careful of sensitive areas and then also what to do with their belly. But you, you explained that. Yeah, you, well, and you're going to pay attention because if they flinch, you know you're too close. Okay. Whether they're in the physical or if you feel the flinch in you, Mm -hmm. and it's a distant, then you know you're too close. Mm -hmm. You know, you, either your intention is really strong because they're feeling all that. Mm -hmm. You want to do a good job, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's usually, it increases the intensity of the, I want to do this right, <laughs> right? But that's our desire, our heart-centeredness, all of that is really good, but we listen to the energy and then it will tell us the next step. Even when I think I know, I always laugh because the animal will say, um, yeah, no, that's not right. I'm like, whoops. You know, because that's my thinking mind, not my intuitive self going, okay, what's, what's on the agenda today? Just let me know. And then I douse it or I, but the treatment plan can be anything that they deem priority. And that's where the crystals show up. I mean, I have um, one client, um, I probably have more than that, but this one client, she has multiple, multiple dogs and a cat. And when the, we first started working together, she had a dog that wasn't well. And then she bought, then she got another dog. She adopted another one. And what I had her do because there was a lot of things going on in the house is I had her buy raw selenite. This is polished. I have a raw one on my, but, um, and put it in their crates. So they put it in their crates or she, I, one of them, she actually put up for the cat, the bed that the cat tends to be in. And it just, cause it self clears, right? Mm -hmm. And that allows the energy to soften and it allows the animal to slowly transition from a traumatic world to this nice loving environment.
So that's a consideration too. But you know, if crystal shows up, I start asking, okay, do you want a particular type of crystal? What do you, you know, would you like the massage? Would you like to sleep with it? <laughs> like, are we removing energy? Are we putting energy in? Are we doing both to balance the system? I, it's uh, anybody who has a session with me, they'll know I ask a lot of questions. So the animal knows that. So they're like, they're usually knocking on the door. Well, I'd like to answer all your questions up front so I could have more Reiki. <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's just listening to the energy because it's not a black and white thing, right? Anything else you want to add, Jen? You're awful quiet. Uh, no, I think you, you <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> you think? How many times have you heard this one? <laughs> no, you did good. Oh, thank you. As always. Oh, love you too. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions on crystals and... I mean, there's things to think about for crystals is that you want to make sure you don't, you don't want to put something that they can't chew on, right? So the hematite has iron in it. You might not want to put that, you know, you don't want them. So you want to just be aware of the same thing you wouldn't do for a human. You definitely don't want to do for the dog or the cat or the bird or the, the size matters. Horses are, again, there because the energy moves in a very specific pattern. Many times I'm going to work, like say from the top of their spine down one leg because mm -hmm. the energy is gonna come out of the feet. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm moving whether it's in person or distant. Dogs, we're dogs and cats, we're pretty, they're pretty flexible, you know, and they, but they walk on all four. So how are they going to discharge the energy if you start a process, right? By moving this energy. Birds are a little different because they naturally can stand, but they discharge energy um, not only that way, but they do a lot, either if they're talking or their breath, um, yeah, so it's just watching their behavior, which I'm going to talk about next week. Um, how, how can you make these decisions? You pay attention. It's not really like, uh, I call them treatment plans. That sounds like it should have a structure, right? I call it, oh yeah, I have a drop down menu. When, like today, when I'm looking at okay, how do I do this? I had to really think about it. I'm like, okay, because everybody that shows up, per human or animal, they have a different, they're, everybody's so unique. Their energy system has some kind of foundational the same, but they're not the same. What their experiences are in life, where the energy got stuck, all those pieces. So I try very hard not to judge. I just listen and write down basically what they tell me, or I put it in an email for the animals. So, yeah. I think this is really helpful, especially for like the taking it easy in the beginning, especially with the animals. I had a, I did a session on Cooper who's 15 and, um, I just, I found myself doing Reiki and then I'm like, okay, now do you want a massage? And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to clean your ears. And I'm like, okay, you want me to clean your nose? You know what I mean? Like, I just kept going because I was looking for like that definite, um, like I'm better sense. Mm -hmm. And then what happened was, and I believe this is what it was. I was like, try, I'm like, just like communicate to me, Cooper. And I got this strong image of my husband bringing in a bowl of food and lo and behold, I went out and I told my husband, I said, I think he wants 
food. He's like, he's already eaten. But anyway, he took him food and that's what he wanted. So like, I feel like he, it was almost like he was like, yeah, okay, this is nice. But like, if you could just have him bring me some food now. Mm -hmm. But then overall, what happened is an infection came out of his foot that night, blew up and then opened that night. And then we were able to clear it. So, I mean, as silly as I, I am. <laughs> right. It's, it does work. And like, yeah, I think this is just a great way to kind of look at it of like, yeah, you know what? Yeah. Well, they're going to tell you, I'm all done. You mm -hmm. know, uh, my dog, Mickey, had an opinion. And, but the coolest thing was, is when I would do a certain type of Reiki, he would lay in my lap, like, like in a cross, I'm, you know, I've got my Indian style and he's laying in my lap. He was a little one and he would crash mm. and he was not a lap dog and he would crash. I mean, I would be able to pick him up after 15, 20 minutes and lay him on his bed and you, you wouldn't hear a peep out of him for four hours. So was he telling me that I did a good job? Right. Because then he would get up and he would be all happy. And when the animals, one of the reasons that I see to it that some of the owners are home is that usually we think about when you get up off the table and you've done a massage, you've received a massage, what do you have to go do? you need to go to the bathroom. Well, this is the same thing with them. They're discharging the energy through the whatever process they do, right? They might yawn, they might have to go to the bathroom, They or they wanna eat. Hmm. So you've had that those sessions where you get done, you're like, Get out of my way. I'm so hungry. And that's a sign of the processing and the detoxing. So good observation, Jane. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. Yeah, it's lovely. Do you think we can use crystals for plants also? Of course. Same way you think? Oh, similar? Yeah, I would douse it. Mm-hmm. Because some of the, you know, some of the plants, the crystal would be too much and others that it's like a coming home. So that's where the crystals came from, right? The earth. Yeah. Yeah. So it depends upon the plant and the crystal. Yeah. No, awesome. That's a great idea. They might be, ha maybe you do the, you can um, charge the rake, the crystal with Reiki and then put it in your plant. Right? That would be a great way to empower the crystal. Cool. Any other questions, you guys? Are you guys feeling complete for today? Yes? More questions? This is. quiet group. Okay. So next week, right, is animal behavior. We're going to talk about that in the energy and things of that sort. And then if I can get my act together and get it on my website, I can also send you guys the information on the animal energy anatomy. It's a Saturday. It's only for the morning. It's like nine to 12, real simple, easy. And, um, but we'll see what the energy is, is telling me, right? <laughs> Next week is Valentine's Day. Yeah, aren't you going oh, out you. away for, but yeah. Well, not away. Uh, his language of love is time. So I take time off, but thank you. <laughs> yes. So this is the 22nd that we'll do the behavior one. So, but I'll send an email Either way, so you'll know, are we gonna do this animal energy thing or do I'll move it to another month or see if I can get, my husband happens to be my IT person. So sometimes it's difficult with his job and my needs, you know? So we all have to do it, but all right. Well, happy Valentine's everybody.
Same to you. Thank you. See you. Thank you. Happy Valentine. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Take care.